McKinsey's Red Rock Test is the final tough door of the solve assessment. You'll be dropped onto a virtual island, surrounded by wolves, elk, and trees. But your real challenge is in the data. The test pushes you to analyze, calculate, and reason like a real consultant. In this video, we'll walk through what the Red Rock Test looks like, type of questions, and practical strategies to help you master it. McKinsey Solve, the firm's gamified pre-screening test, now typically features only two parts, Seawolf and Red Rock. The scenario places you on an island, joining a team of scientists. Your task is to help the research team by collecting data, performing calculations, writing reports, and creating visualizations. This is a direct simulation of the core tasks a consultant performs every single day. The Red Rock test has two parts, the study and the cases, totaling between 12 and 20 questions. Of course, McKinsey would not go easy on us with their strict rules. First, time is limited. We have 35 minutes in total, so make sure you make it count and manage the time efficiently. Second, you only get one shot per question to submit, or I will call it one hit wonder. You are not allowed to go back to review nor skip forward. Third, what should you expect? Math. A lot of math and charts waiting to be solved. Things like algebra, basic statistics, and all types of charts. Besides those rules, McKinsey pays to make its own test interface, which may confuse candidates a bit, but we will dive into it in this video. We recommend practicing 15 to 20 mock tests to build speed and see every question style. Check out our mock test library with simulations and math essentials in our link in the description. All right, let's jump into the Red Rock test. Here's the interface of the Red Rock study task, or actually the simulation created by our IT team. The time bar can be seen on the top of the screen here, telling you how much time you have left. Any pause symbol on the time bar, that means the current part is untimed, like the training questions. Over here, you can see our two parts, study and cases. The study is divided into three smaller stages, investigation, analysis, and report. At any moment, please feel free to pause the video so you can solve the questions on your own. The first stage is investigation, which is mainly about data collection. On the left sidebar are just headings of one long page, so you are free to move back and forth between them. However, notice that I cannot open analysis and report yet, so I can't know for sure how much work is ahead. The goal here is to collect only the relevant data into the research journal on the right side. If you collect irrelevant data, it may count against you. The data in white boxes are collectible. Simply click, drag, and drop them into the journal. The objectives are for the whole study, that is, a question you are supposed to answer. Hence, you should always collect this piece in your journal. Be sure to quickly skim the study information, as it contains vital formulas and background context that you should definitely include them. Coming down, you can see exhibits containing data, and again, only pick out the relevant data you need for the formulas and objective. The journal acts as a digital notepad, carrying your numbers into the next stages. You can also change the label and reorganize. Once you have done collecting and organizing as you need, you can submit the results to unlock the next phase, which is analysis. The analysis stage is where you perform your math skills. Here, you're supposed to use the collected data to formulate and calculate to find the answer to the objective. If you did forget to collect a key piece of data, you could still go back to investigation. This is the first exception to the not one step back rule. This stage tends to have two to four math questions, each containing one to three sub questions. Let's try doing the first question, the expected number of capture attempts for each pirate ship this year. This is fairly straightforward since we know the number of attempts for each ship last year and also that they will go up by 25% this year. McKinsey nicely provides an on-screen calculator on the right side for you. Of course you can use a handheld calculator, but McKinsey wants to see your math process on their own calculator. Moreover, it's better than a handheld one because you can drag numbers directly from your research journal onto the blank spot or the calculator screen. Now that we're in the second question, you can clearly see I am not allowed to open question one again. For this question two, we have to calculate the expected chances of black flag and red flag captures. We have enough data to calculate the current chances of each outcome, and we know how much they will change this year, so we do it like the first question. Also for this question, I want you to look at the unit being used, which is percent, and which differs from percentage point. Both terms are present in Red Rock, so it's important to tell them apart. Before I submit, I realized the question demands us to express the result in percent, but I used decimals in my original calculations. I'm going to multiply the result by 100.
Going to the third question, we now have to use the answers from the previous questions. Remember, some questions depend on previous answers, so one mistake can create a nasty chain reaction. Also, you can see that this time I'm dragging data from the journal instead of typing, to preserve all the decimals from the original answers. And the final question is just a simple addition. Not much to talk about here. Once you've done all the questions, you proceed to a tab called Review. You cannot go back to the analysis questions, but you can still check your answer by going back to the investigation stage and using the on-screen calculator. You should also use this part to arrange and label your collected data if necessary. If you're confident you've got everything right, you can now proceed to the final, easiest stage of the study called Report. In Report, the test gives you a few paragraphs that, if completed, would answer your original objectives. This is where you compile the answers from the previous stages. You also will be locked out of investigation and analysis. This summary stage consists of three questions or substages called report, graph selection, and visualization. This part is pretty straightforward as your job is simply to drag numbers onto the blanks and choose the right conclusions. Also notice the difference in the answer blanks, which now have the numbers one, two, three written on them. This signals that they accept manual input. Onto graph selection, you are asked to choose a suitable type of chart for a certain analysis. Till now, most tests will only have three choices, pie chart, line chart, and bar chart. It requires you to know which chart types are suitable for which purposes. The directions tend to be specific enough for us to quickly figure out the correct options, as long as we know the basics. For this mock test, I'm seeing that the directions tell me to compare distinct variables, so I'm going to use the bar chart. In visualization, you will drag and drop numbers from the journal onto the chart to finalize the report. You can still change the type of chart and redo the visualization. So we are done with the first level, the study. Moving on to part two is the cases, including six cases. Each of these cases is similar to one part or task of the study. The test also provides the calculator and journal only when needed. The flow of part two is like part one. You have to solve cases in sequence and there's no going back once you have submitted your answers. Again, take your time to pause the video if you need to solve the cases. Case one contains a calculation question, the single most popular question type in Red Rock. The type of calculation shown here is the weighted average. So we take each possible repair cost, multiply them with their respective weight, or in this case, chance, sum up the results and divide that sum with the sum of all weights, which in this case is just 1, or 100%. The correct result should be 1.37. Case 2 contains a probability question. These probability questions in Red Rock tend to be the basic types, namely intersection of events, union of two events, and complements. I'm going to use the union of two events formula for this one, so I'll sum up the chances of each of these two islands having a treasure, then minus the chance of both islands having treasures at the same time. The answer should be 55. Moving on to case three, we see a fairly daunting chart and three sub-questions that explicitly require you to know basic statistics. This chart is a histogram, showing the distribution of values in a data set. On the horizontal axis, we have the recorded values, in this case, the number of ships spotted on a given day. And on the vertical axis, we have frequency, in this case, the number of days on which a given number of ships was spotted. The first question asks for the median of this data set. The median is the middle number, if all values in the set are arranged in an ascending order. If there are an even number of values, then the median is the two middle values summed up and divided by two. In this case, we have 90 values in total from the 90 days. So I'm going to find the 45th and 46th values, add them up and divide by two. Since the histogram's already sorted, I just move left to right, adding up the frequencies until I pass the 45th and 46th values. Now, if we look at the horizontal axis, then the 45th and 46th should both be five. So the median is five as well. So the correct option is larger than four. The second question asks for the mode of this data set. Mode is the value with the highest frequency. There can be multiple modes if they share the same frequency. If all the values have the same frequency, then there is no mode. 
To answer this question, we just need to look for the highest column in the histogram, which says 4 on the horizontal axis, so the mode is 4. So the correct option is equals 4. The third and final question asks for the meaning, or basically the average. Technically, you could use a calculator, but here's the shortcut. You see most columns sit to the right of 4, so the mean's also to the right, or larger than 4. So the answer, larger than 4. Case 4 is a math case again, but this time it's a formulation question. Instead of calculating, you need to collect necessary numbers into the research journal, which means it is a multiple choice question where you have to choose all of the multiple correct options. In the real test, these tend to be less common than their calculation cousins. Now, to answer this particular question, we just need to collect the number of ships captured for year Y minus 1. No need to collect the data for the remaining years. This is because, first, the question asks for just the additional revenue from the tactical changes from Y minus 1 to Y, not all of the expected growth. Second, this additional revenue is expressed as being 5 percentage points, added on top of the expected growth without the tactical changes. So, 5% of the revenue in year Y minus 1, not 5% of the growth. Case 5 also has a formula question, but this time you just need to choose one correct answer. This case also requires you to change these percentages by a few percentage points each. So, unlike question 2 of the analysis stage where we had to multiply, this time we use addition. For example, the share of ships R&D was originally 35% of the original budget. Now they want to decrease it by 6 percentage points. So, we just need to add minus 6 to 35, or a subtraction by 6. If it was a 6% decrease, we would have to multiply 35 with 0.94. Looking at the options, the first and the third ones use multiplications, so they are out. The second one needs parentheses to be correct. That leaves us with the fourth option. The final case is a visualization one. For these questions, you must be familiar with most of the chart types used in data analytics and read the directions carefully. The goal is to illustrate the shares of tonnage taken up by each type of goods. There are 37 types of goods, and they want us to illustrate the shares of tonnage taken up by each type of goods, or to use the technical term, composition. Among the options, the bar chart is out immediately because it's not meant for compositions. All the three remaining options can display compositions. The next two options, the stacked bars, are great if we had multiple ships to compare, but here it's just one, the brass hind. So we're going to pick the tree map. Then we submit and end this mock test. So that's all of a Red Rock session. In the real test, you will not know if you did your test right or not, except if you captured the test content and tried to do it on paper afterwards. The review screen I have here is just for our simulation, for practicing purposes. Do you think you did so well on the test? Share your thoughts on this video in the comment down below. That's all for the Red Rock study task at the moment. Thank you very much for your attention, and we at M Consulting Prep wish you the best luck to get into consulting.